I have too much filament. All right, you guys know me. There's no way I have too much filament. But what I do have is I have an organizational problem and I need to rearrange my closet so that I can find the filament I need when I want it. So I know some of you out there are filament holics like I am. So if you're interested in seeing the tips and tricks I use for organizing my filament and keeping it well conditioned, come along with me. I'm Courtney. This is Filament Stories. Let's get into it. Organizing is one thing, but how you're going to store your filament really is another. Now, I am fortunate to have a closet under the stairs, Harry Potter style, in our basement. And so we renamed it the Filament Fallout Shelter, and I put all of the filament in there. And I was able to store it in a way that I think is a lot more accessible. And that's because I wanted to store them side by side instead of in stacks. In stacks, you know, it's something at the bottom, you pull it out and you've got to deal with the whole stack potentially falling. But side by side is great. You can pull any spool out individually, except that they roll. And so how do you stop them from rolling? And I've got two easy ways. One is just to get a um, shower curtain rod or an actual curtain rod and press it against the side of your space or you can get some foam tape and put that at the edge it works really great the spools won't roll off it'll hold them but you can easily roll them off or grab them over it now if you happen to have some really tall shelves which is what i had i decided i could get two rows of filament but i wanted to see the second row i stuck a couple of two by fours behind it to prop up the second row and then i put another shower curtain and it gave me a lot more storage in a tall shelf i live in north carolina and we do sometimes have really high humidity but my studio is in the basement here at our house and it actually has low humidity, especially in the back where this closet is because it's against a foundation wall. So I'm able to keep out PLA, PETG, ASA, ABS, and some other filaments and I don't really need to have them in bags or boxes, but I like to make sure that the temperature and humidity in the room is managed and so I added a dehumidifier. Now I'll give you a warning because I completely messed this up. The initial dehumidifier was something we had already had. It was small. I put it in there and it worked and had a long life and it pulled a lot of moisture out. In the beginning, it was just filling up gallons, a gallon every week of water coming out of a little closet. But after a while it stabilized and I think there was moisture in the walls and just all around. And after that, I could open the door and walk in and out and it really didn't affect the humidity in the room. And I know because I had a bunch of these little hygrometers all over the place to see if it was higher humidity at the lower part or at the bottom or near the door. And yeah, it remained pretty stable. That dehumidifier died. And that's when I made a mistake. I thought I'm going to get a really powerful dehumidifier and it will just suck all the moisture out of this filament. And a more powerful dehumidifier that is rated for a larger space is going to not work well in a small space. It tried so hard to pull moisture out and as the air was circulating back to the dehumidifier that it almost got to 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the room and that's not ideal for filament and it wasn't really doing anything more for removal of moisture. So I got rid of it and I moved back to a just a standard small dehumidifier. But I'm really happy with the setup. I'm able to get a lot of filament in the closet. I can keep track of the humidity, especially with a dehumidifier that I can run as needed. And the filament's nice and organized, but I need to organize it by company. It's time to take everything out of the filament fallout shelter, organize it by company, and then put it back in. So when I brought it out, I took my gorgeous rainbow and I de-rainbowed it and I had big stacks of companies like Prusa, Bamboo Lab, Zero 3D, Polymaker, Cookie Cat, lots of big stacks. And then when that was all done, I started to put them back in. Let's do an epic montage of me putting hundreds of spools back into the closet.
open filament in the closet is just not going to work for everyone in their environment. Some people always keep their filament in bags no matter what type of filament and they never open a box until they plan on starting to use it. For me, I can keep them all open. Now, I do have a lot of filament in bins and that's all of my hygroscopic filament like my TPE, TPU, nylon, and anything else that just absorbs moisture at a pace that I cannot combat with a dehumidifier in the closet. I prefer the bins that have a seal all around them. They're a little more expensive, but when you close them, it actually will keep moisture out. I also put desiccant beads in the bin as well so I can keep track. And of course, a hygrometer so you can see what's happening in the bin. And that has maintained my hygroscopic filament really well. Instead of having all your filament out, some people prefer to print filament swatches. And there are so many options and ideas on how you can print a different swatch so you can see what it'll print like when you print with it. So aside from printing your own, some companies have these available for sale and usually they're fairly inexpensive. So this is Polar Filaments and it gives you an idea what all their filaments look like. If you get a Bamboo Lab printer, it comes with a set of their filament in swatch form. And different companies have different options. I think it's a really neat way. And of course they wanna sell it to you inexpensive because then maybe you'll come back and buy more filament. So I love the swatches, although I have a little bit too much filament and I've never done it myself. But the closet's done, so let's go take a final look. I'm so excited, it looks so great. So we've got some companies here initially that we do a lot of work with. Here's Prusa, we got Bamboo Lab, Look at the gorgeous cookie cad. And then here is the wall of protopasta. We've done a lot of work with protopasta over the years. Love it. We have some other brands here for Polymaker. We've got Greengate 3D, some printed solid there in the bag. And then there are just a lot of other companies here. But this turns out to only represent some of the companies that we've worked with because I couldn't fit it all in. I've got all of this. Plus, I've got my incoming stack over here, and there's more, but this is all I'm admitting to having to my husband. What? One casualty of reorganizing the closet was my stool, which I use all the time, but I was able to replace it with the stool. At the time, I got so angry. This is from my children when they were really young. They got in there with Sharpies and drew all over it, and I was so mad. But now it's actually kind of a treasure, and every time I see it, I think of when they were little babies riding with Sharpies when they shouldn't have been. All right, hope to see you guys next time. Check it out.